Seat. Uh, good evening, and uh, welcome to uh, Monday Thursday, uh, Command Thursday. Uh, the service is in, uh, uh, in three simple parts. Uh, start out a little bit with antecedents of the day. Uh, we will have uh, a foot washing. Jesus commands that. Uh, we will have also a communion service and then following that, the stripping of the altar. So encourage your uh, prayers, uh, your participation, uh, and your presence. years ago, a momentous meal took place. Sitting around the table were Moses, his brother Aaron, his sister Miriam, and the multitudes of Israelites preparing to leave Egypt. It was the first Passover meal. 2,000 years later, Jesus sat at a similar meal with his disciples. The story of Moses and his leadership of the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land was retold. Jesus and his disciples studied this story and observed this holiday the evening before his crucifixion. We come together tonight to remember and relive that evening. The Passover is celebrated to remember how God heard the cries of Israel. 
when they were slaves in Egypt and acted decisively in freeing them. Passover is, more, is about more than saying the right prayers and singing the right songs. It is about experiencing the love God felt for humanity and which God expressed by freeing the Jewish people from Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, each man is to take a lamb for his family, slaughter them at twilight, eat the meat roasted over a fire with bitter herbs, and bread made without yeast. They are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and top of the door frames. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down the firstborn of men and animal, the blood will be a sign. When I see blood, I will pass over you. This is a day you are to remember for generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. On that day, tell your children, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. And so the Passover was established. It was a feast Jesus celebrated. The annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem was a part of his faith. Jesus had looked forward to this occasion, having his own apostles, his chosen friends, his intimate companions for three years, grouped around him in the fellowship of the Last Supper. When Jesus and his friends ate that Passover meal, they were a small band of Israelites living in the midst of the oppressive Roman Empire. The Passover story of freedom and resistance to powerful political leaders resonated with poignancy and passion. We celebrate with joy and sing the psalms. All praise to you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. A reading from St. John's Gospel. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, 
and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, and who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash <clears throat> except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for that reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he'd washed their feet, he put on a robe and returned to the table. And he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example that you also should do as I have done. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. Jesus taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even by miracles, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example. But none stand more in need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you who have been appointed as representatives of the congregation and who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. But come remembering his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For as it is written, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
reading from Matthew's Gospel. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near, and I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples went into the city as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said to them, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as is written for him, but woe to the one to whom the Son of Man has been betrayed. It would be better for him not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. After blessing it, he broke it and said, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never eat again or drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
as we break bread and drink wine together tonight, I invite you to come up around the altar as we celebrate communion this evening. Blessed are you, Lord God, you of the universe. We bring forth this bread and this wine from your creation. The work of human hands and the fruit of the vine. And these become for us our spiritual food and our spiritual drink. Almighty God, we thank you for your love. You created the world and delivered it into our care. We rebelled against you, and you built a path that if followed could lead us toward salvation. You led us out of bondage in Egypt and into the land of promise. Through the message of the Hebrew scriptures, you shared your plan of salvation with us. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, who by his life, death, and resurrection freed us from sin and death and calls us to life eternal and love. In St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, I receive from the Lord what I also hand on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. <clears throat> the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? And the bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Therefore, 
There is one bread, and we who are many become one body, where we all partake of this one bread. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to fall upon us and upon these gifts. And as we eat the bread, your body, your presence, and drink from this cup, your life and your health, transform us into the body of Christ and empower us to be your people in the world. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And therefore, let us be the feast. These are the gifts of God that are given for the people of God. Let us take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
seats once again, please. This is a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 26, beginning in the 36th verse. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place 
so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. As they led him away to be crucified, we remember his life and his death. Deserted by his friends, the Son of Man walks alone. We are surrounded by memories of him, so many things that symbolize his love. We take them away to remember that all his followers fled. We are left with the emptiness of the world without Christ. We remove the Holy Scriptures, the writings which govern God's faithful and reveal the true nature of God and Jesus Christ. The Bible shares our history as a people of God. The stories of our salvation brought about by God and Jesus brings about the kingdom of God. The Bible is one of the three foundations of our faith along with tradition and reason. We discard the hymnal, our book of joy and praise. Ever since the angels sang to the shepherds on Christmas Eve, the <coughs> hymn has been the agent of spiritual awakening for God's people. The word gospel means good news. The gospel contains the words of Jesus from the, from the evangelists. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. God's words of compassion, hope, promise, and love are all contained in the good news of Jesus. We take down the antipendium, the decorative cloth, often made of silk or brocade, which hangs from the pulpit signifying the color of the church, of the church season, being observed. We carry away the alms basins, plates that represent our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to God, are placed on the altar, the place of sacrifice. Gifts collected are used to support the ministries of the local congregation and spreading of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We eliminate the missal, the book containing all the options of prayers and responses needed to celebrate Holy Communion throughout the year. Ombre means covered. A tabernacle is a place where God lives. In liturgical churches, this place is designated to reserve bread and blessed wine from previous services, to take to the sick and shut in during the week. On this night, all the blessed elements will be consumed 
and the lamp representing the presence of God will be extinguished. We clear away the lavabo, the wash bowl. Lavabo means, I will wash. The priest celebrating communion ceremonially washes his or her hands in this bowl to prepare to begin the Eucharistic prayer. A prayer from Psalm 26 is recited by the priest during the washing of their hands. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession to your altar. We carry off the chalice, the pattern, the veil, and verse. The chalice has long been a symbol of the Christian church. It symbolizes the common cup from which Jesus drank with his disciples during the Last Supper. It is also viewed as a symbol of Christ's power to redeem humankind. The pattern is a round black dish used by Jesus at the Passover to distribute bread to his disciples. The veil and verse cover the chalice, symbolizing the veil used to cover the face of Jesus in the tomb. We put away the altar candles. The candles represent Jesus as the light of the world and the twofold nature of Jesus, fully God and fully man. Lighting the altar candles simply remind the congregation that the time and space for worship are sacred. We remove the fair linen, the cloth used to cover the top of the altar. There are five crosses on the cloth, representing the wound of Christ on the cross. The cloth symbolizes the shroud used to bury Jesus in the tomb on Good Friday. The last to leave the sanctuary are the processional cross and torches. During the processions and worship, the torches and the cross emphasize the importance of the teachings of Christ. The cross leads the way, and the torches light the way for all Christian endeavors. With our light gone, we are left to remain lost in darkness. Darkness rolls over the sun, across the tomb. <laughs> 